people don't know this, but this is actually the right way to eat a cinnamon roll. We start by unraveling it from the center and... Mm -mm. I'm sorry. Come here. Get so close. We need to talk about this closer. Back it up a little bit. That's not the right way to eat a cinnamon roll. I'm not going to lie to you, this idea works beautifully. This idea is actually perfect. Come here, if it was with any other bug. With any other bug, this is a beautiful idea. But with this specific bug, I don't think people understand. They call this bug the John Wick of Hornets. Do you want to know why? Because this hornet specifically, if you become rivals with it, they're very persistent. This specific hornet can survive for weeks in water, fully submerged, like five to 10 minutes, but if there's a little bit of air with that water, weeks. On top of that, it has photographic memory. We love that. And also, I guess it can spray venom? Huh? There's been stories of hornets being outside of houses for days, waiting. Again, like John Wick. I just, at this point, if you see a hornet, just walk the other way. Krispy Kreme here in Guadalajara, Mexico, and look at all the bees. Now, fun fact, right? Come here. Back when I worked at Krispy Kreme, they actually had protocol for situations like this, right? Believe it or not. I'm sorry. But they called it a code yellow. You can only imagine why. And that is because bees are attracted to things like nectar or pollen or uh, propolis, which is a mixture that honeybees would make, right? To put it in like layman's terms, bees love sweet. So when there were openings inside of Krispy Kreme stores, sometimes overnight bees would form hives literally in the cases. Now, depending on the severity of how many bees are in the case, we can normally just like close off the actual like area itself and still sell donuts for a little bit, depending on how bad it can get. Also, fun fact, bees don't like donut holes. So, you know, the, the donut holes are at least uh, good to go. So. Tell me the biggest lie an adult has ever told you and when you figured out it was a lie. When I was a kid, my dad, in fact, told me that it was illegal to turn the lights on inside the car while it was in motion. Come here. I now understand that he said that because he just didn't want me to turn the lights on in the car. But nobody updated me on that information. So for the longest time, I always thought it was illegal to turn the lights on in the car while the car was moving. And it was an immediate 20 year sentence in jail. So as a grown man with my own car, I never turned on the lights in the car until one day I literally had to. It was too dark, but coincidentally, I got pulled over. When the cop came to the side of the window, I'm in tears. And he goes, do you know why I pulled you over? And I said, it's because I had my lights on in the car while it was in motion. And he goes, no, your, your tail lights, are, are you okay? And I'm like, no. So instead of giving me a ticket, he recommended me to a good therapist. It was a lot going on. It's not illegal, by the way. One, this device stops you from using your mobile phone. You can lock it in this case for up to 99 hours. Fun fact, these are unbreakable. I didn't know that, right? My friend bought this yesterday. You can put your phone in it, and then you put a code on it, you close it, and you put a time limit. And it literally traps your phone inside that case for however long you set the timer for, and you cannot open it. It's like impossible. I jokingly put it for five hours yesterday and closed it, because I'm like, oh, that's a cute little device. It's not cute, it's serious, because my phone was locked in it for five hours. I, I'm like, I just want my phone back, and my friend's like, well, you're gonna have to wait five hours. And I was like, well, can I at least bring the device back to my house? He's like, no. So I had to leave the phone at my friend's house for five hours. It, it works. Um, what I'm saying is it works very well. He's 38 years old and I just got back from the grocery store where I had to buy him dino nuggets. People have to understand something. Men, we don't grow up. We just grow old. That is quite literally it. Well, it doesn't matter if we're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60. We will laugh at the same jokes, right? We normally like the same foods because they're just good. They're delicious. We still love the same cartoons. If you put them on, we'll enjoy them. You get what I'm saying? When we get sick, we turn into big old babies. It's just, it's just the truth, right? For example, I, I 
I still love Dino Nuggies. I have some right now. I, for some reason, Dino Nuggies taste just better than regular chicken nuggets. It's just a fact. It's just truth, right? I, I have two things all the time. Either Dino Nuggies or Uncrustables. If I, I one or the other will work. If we, if I have both, I'm the happiest clam in the world. You get what I'm saying right now? It doesn't matter. If 30 years from now, it'll be the same exact thing. I'm not gonna. It is not to catch you stealing. So allegedly, the Walmart CEO, right, made a statement about a day ago saying that he's willing to shut down all Walmarts around the world if they keep losing money in theft. Apparently, they're losing too much money in theft. They lost about $3 billion this year in theft. Come here. Guess how much Walmart makes in profit every year? $152 billion in profit. And that's actually on the website. So clearly that's not going to happen. They're not closing anything. And the thing is, right, if you really are worried about theft so much, right, and, and you're willing to go to the lengths of creating devices that show exactly how things are being scanned at the self-checkout, why not just actually have real cashiers again, right? Or make Walmart 24 hours. Or add Apple Pay. You know, just, just do, do certain things that might prevent this. Because if not, people are just going to get smarter. And nothing's really, you know what I mean? Like, We'll give it the knock test, right? Ooh. I don't think you guys understand, right? The knock test for bread is a real thing and is predominantly amongst New Yorkers, right? I made bread one time. I made bread one time. It was for a work party, right? I make the bread. I bring it to the party. I just made it, right? And as I'm putting it down on the table, this coworker I had from New York picked the bread up, knocked on the bread, and he just put it back down. And I'm like, are you going to try the bread? Come here. He said, I wouldn't even waste my butter on that bread right there. I never, ever wanted to make bread ever again. So please understand, New Yorkers know what they're talking about when it comes to bread. Is you just pull that, put them on your nose. Oh. It's the fact that I ran outside of my room. I saw this and I told myself, oh my goodness, there are glasses that exist. First off, that you can just pinch on. That's awesome. And second, that can make you look like Dr. Otto Octavius from Spider-Man. I have no idea where to find them. I just started running outside, seeing the nearest store, asking the store owner, where can I get my Dr. Otto Octavius sunglasses? They told me to leave, but that one of the best creations I've seen in my life. I'm not going to lie to you. Your phone background and incoming text message. So it always looks like somebody just texted. You want to know what's funny, right? They conducted a study years ago where they tested 100 people who claim to be extroverted, right? Outgoing, who loves to be social. Then they also tested 100 people who are introverted, people who like to keep to themselves, who don't like being social at all, right? And what they found in the case study is that the majority introverted people are just smarter than extroverted people, right? Mind you, this is a smaller study, but it was still interesting because they say they claim introverted people are just more clever. And this is a tactic that introverted people use to get out of social situations. They'll make their wallpapers incoming text messages to be like, hey, I'm getting a text. I got to go. My friend who's extremely introverted, what he does is he screenshots an incoming call and makes it his wallpaper and sets a six minute alarm. And the alarm tone is his ringtone. So it makes it seem like he's getting a call so he can get out of any conversation he might not want to be in. He, it's brilliant. Because this is how much a cat is supposed to eat in a day. This. So this is Harvey. Um, come here. I saw this yesterday and I was like, you know what? Let me try to feed Harvey less food than I give him because he's a relatively bigger cat. Um, I fed him less food. He was not happy. Want to know why? Because I fell asleep and I woke up. Harvey opened my door. I did not know he can do that until I fed him less food. Not only did he open my door, he turned on my light. I don't know how he did it. And he just kept staring at me until I gave him more food. So the thing is, right, less food is great unless you have a cat that's just, that just does not want to cooperate. I'm not going to lie to you. Harvey normally likes to get what he wants. Good news and bad news, right? Come here. Number one, bug was captured. Awesome. That's the good news, right? It's, 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 it's step two. That's the part that might get a little interesting because that specific bug, right? And this is a fun fact. That specific bug relies on its senses. And the most important sense that it relies on, come here, is photographic memory. 
I'm actually serious. Those specific bugs have photographic memory and they do in fact hold grudges. So that then leads to the question, what do you do when you catch the bug in the cup? Um, Nothing, actually. You stay there probably forever. I'm not going to lie to you. The, the most important thing that you can do, right, is tell your family, hey, the bug is captured because that's the only thing you could probably say. Because the minute that you let that cup go, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Crack the egg on the flat surface, not the edge of the pan. Okay? Fun fact about eggs, right? Come here. When you crack an egg on a flat surface, it helps keep the membrane intact, which will then hold all the small pieces and shells together. Now, you can crack an egg on a flat surface by tapping it, but it's way more effective if you just drop the egg on the flat surface. If you were to drop an egg from a certain height onto a flat surface, it's a perfect break. And then you'll have all the yolk and no shells, and I'll show you. Super simple, just drop it from a high surface, perfect break, stays intact, shell's good. We'll do it another one. Perfect break, no shells. Third time's a charm, do it from a higher height, right, looking right at you. Perfect break, no shells. Take a look, all yolk, no shells. Try it out. Shit. I don't think you guys understand, right? People who love shoes or sneakers, they love shoes. Like they'll value that over people, right? So if you get them dirty or if you crease them, they're basically like useless to people who love shoes like that. I had a friend in college, right? The school gave him a financial aid disbursement. That's money that you get for food and educational purposes, right? They gave him $2,000. He had to make that stretch for three months, right? He wanted this expensive pair of shoes. He bought the $500 pair of shoes and put those little protectors on the bottom. We walked along a dirt path and he showed me the protectors because he ripped them off, not knowing we had to walk back. So we got those that first pair dirty. So he went to the store and bought the same pair that day for another $500. He creased that pair, then bought a third pair and spent $1,500 in the same three pairs of shoes because he said school's temporary, but shoes are forever. McDonald's, their CEO said that they're starting to see pushback on some of their prices. McDonald's is starting to forget their role here. Come here. McDonald's was a place that you go to when you had $3 in your bank account and you don't get paid till next week and you just want a meal with some kind of substance. McDonald's was there to save the day, right? This was already said before, but McDonald's thinks that we were eating their food because it was just that delicious. No, we were eating there because it was cheap. It was affordable, right? It was delicious for the price that it was at, right? Does that make sense? The fact that now McDonald's is raising their prices so high, parents used to ask their kids if they had McDonald's money. Parents are are starting to not have McDonald's money. Does that make sense, right? McDonald's took away the snack wrap. They took away all day breakfast. They took away the dollar menu, right? The difference between McDonald's and Chick-fil-A is only $1.50. If any fast food place had any kind of brains, they would lower their prices right under McDonald's because people who are struggling still need a burger. Does that make sense? It's illegal for your boss to tell you that you're not allowed to discuss your pay with your coworkers, including bonuses. See, and fun fact about talking about pay with coworkers is this. Um, I wasn't allowed to talk about my pay with my coworkers. That's what my boss told me. Until one day, my coworker was talking about, oh, we need to get paid more. And I was like, I agree. Getting paid $12 an hour is not enough. And he said, Jordan, I'm getting paid $15 an hour. And I was like, did you get a bonus? Come here. He said, Jordan, that's, that's the legal minimum wage. Did you not know that? And I was like, that, you guys getting paid $15 an hour? So yeah, definitely ask about that. I don't know how he got in the house. Like I'm sorry. I, <laughs> come here. We had to ask the real questions here. Like, how how did the cicada get into the hair clip? Do, do you know how, how fast cicadas can move inside of small spaces? You have to be a martial arts master to get the cicada inside of hair clip jail like that. And people are asking, do cicadas bite? Technically, yes, right? Cicadas mistake humans for trees, so they'll try to pierce the skin. Now, it doesn't irritate, but it is scary. So if you guys don't want cicadas around your house, what you can do is you can make a cicada repellent spray. Cicadas do not like the smell of vinegar, peppermint, eucalyptus, or citronella. So if you want, add those oils into a spray bottle with water or dish soap, spray them on your trees so that cicadas won't be attracted to the trees. Either that or just give the cicada your home, your choice. I don't really know.
black shirts, you're going to want to do a dry rot test. So put your fingers and pull. If it rips easy. Hey, there's other ways, you know, to test to see if a shirt is good or not. Um, my friend would do the dry rot testing where he would just rip the shirts um, in the store. That's fun. Uh, we were having a conversation while we were thrifting. I'm actually, I'm talking to him. Mid conversation, he just rips a shirt. I'm like, hey, buddy. Why are we doing that? Um, he's explaining to me that there was, it was a dry rot test and this is how you see if the shirts are a good quality or not, things of that nature. Well, the thrift store itself didn't find that too appealing because they, he char they charged him for every shirt that he ripped. He ripped eight of them. Um, he didn't have money, so I had to pay for the shirts. So come here, just ask the people if the shirts are good. You don't have to rip them. So apparently this is a thing, right? Come here. Apparently if you dip the McDonald's ice cream cone inside of the Coca-Cola, it'll taste better than a root beer float. And if you dip an uh, ice cream cone inside of the high C orange, it'll taste like a dreamsicle. So clearly I got both. However, I had to go two cities over and lie and say that I was Drake's assistant just so they would actually use the ice cream machine. So I got two ice cream cones and I'm gonna try it out right now. Okay, so here is for the Coca-Cola. We're gonna dip it in there, and then we're gonna try it out. Okay, hold on. Now we're gonna dip one in the high C, and then we're gonna try it side by side and see how they taste. That's delicious. I give that one a seven out of 10. Do this one. This tastes like an orange creamsicle. Forget about that one, do this one. How millennials don't seem to be aging quite like the generations before. Millennials age differently from the older generation and this newest generation. Does that make sense? The older generation, they look exactly like their age, right? A 50 year old looks like a 50 year old. A 20 year old looks like a 20 year old, right? Millennials, they either look way too old for their age or they look way too young and there's no in between. Does that make sense? And the newest generation come here, they all just look like adults at this point. Every single person in the newest generation already look like they have a house and they're paying a mortgage. And that's because of stress, right? The older generation, they stressed a good amount. This millennial generation, we have too many things to stress about. And this newer generation, they kind of just gave up. They, they already gave up before it even started. People kept asking me, saying, Jordan, what would you do if you were to find a colony of these specific insects? Come here. I would probably move cities due to the fact that this specific insect has more than seven different nicknames for the amount of danger that surrounds them. I can only tell you one of them. They are called the John Wick of Hornets. And I'll tell you why. Because of their photographic memory, they can survive underwater, and they live up to half of a year. And the angrier they are, the longer they survive. On top of that, they report back to the colonies about what they saw. So not only do 20 of them know what I look like, probably 40 of them aren't too fond of me. Therefore, because of that, I would move cities and probably legally change my name just to be safe. I was today years old when I learned the serrated edges of crackers are used to cut cheese. 26 years. Get so close right now. For 26 years, I've been doing everything incorrectly, and I'm just now recently learning about it, right? Because sure enough, when I heard this, of course I had to contact Ritz as a company. I got a hold of somebody that worked for Ritz, and I said, hey, is it true that you guys' crackers have serrated edges so that it can cut cheese? Guess what they told me? They said that they already released a statement a year ago confirming, right, that that's what the crackers were used for, right? And literally, look it up. There's a statement that already proved that that's why the crackers have those edges, right? And guess what they told me? They said, why do you think we made Ritz crackers look like that? I'm like, I don't know, because they just looked cool. They told me not to quit my day job. They also told me that the crackers cut best on sharp cheddar, Colby Jack cheese, and pepper jack cheese. So try that out. Milkshakes for the whole year of 2023. At this point, I'm just not going to go to fast food places anymore because I got the keychain. I got it. The $2 keychain that if you buy it, you get free Frosties for the whole year. It says right here on the back, right? So I'm like, you know what? I'll go to Wendy's and use the Frosty thing, right? Turns out Wendy's is just like McDonald's because they're like, yeah, our Frosty machine's broken. I'm like, I literally, I literally just saw you use it. They're like, well, we're about to close, so we can't really help you. I'm like, can you please... 
Just give me a frosty. Then they said, we don't have frosty cups. I'm like, I have my own cup. If I bring my own cup, will you put frosty in it? They're like, yeah, sure. I brought this cup. Do you see that line right there? That's how much frosty they put in the cup. I'm, I can't do Wendy's anymore. I can't. Me of ants build a bridge to invade wasps nest. Oh, that's fun. That's great. You guys want to know a couple facts? It's a real f fun facts with Jordan. I'm going to tell you this right now. Did you know that ants are one of the most dangerous predators in the world? That's fun. Here's another one, right? Ants have fatally harmed more people statistically than sharks have ever had. So in theory, ants are more dangerous than sharks. Not only that, ants are incredibly smart. They can swim. They don't have ears. They have two stomachs. And this is the best part about all this, right? They can see in the dark. You didn't know that. Here's one fun little story. I had a bowl of fruit. I had it next to my bed. I woke up to witness one piece of my mango being carried away by an army of ants. And I tell people to this day and they don't believe me. And I'm not going to lie to you. I, I don't blame you, but it happened. I watched them steal my mango. Something you learned that absolutely blew your freaking mind. Ever since learning how to properly pour soda into a cup, I no longer can pour soda regularly anymore. Because at this point, now all you have to do is adjust this to the middle and tip this upside down. And it pours it perfectly. There's no overfizz, there's no overflow. This doesn't touch the can and it empties out the cup completely. And I'm not gonna lie to you, it's the best thing ever. Uh, my family's quite annoyed with me pouring all the, all, the, all the soda like this though. Oh, I also learned this as well. Uh, for these tips, if you were to flip it upside down here, this is where you're supposed to put your straw at. So that's fun. Yeah. Let this be a warning to you guys. If you have a job interview and they hire you almost on the spot, don't work there. There's a reason everybody had left. I had one job interview. We sat down with each other. He said, first things first, do you have a car? I said, yes. He's like, fantastic. And he's writing that down on paper. I'm like, why are you? That has nothing to do with the job. The job didn't even involve a car, right? By the time the interview was done, he said, well, we're going to look this over and we'll give you a call back in a while. I thought it was gonna be a couple of days. I left the building. I was walking to my car. I get a phone call. It's the guy from inside the store. And he's like, yeah, you got the job. I did not take that job. People don't know this, but this is actually the right way to eat a cinnamon roll. We start by unraveling it from the center and- Mm-mm, I'm sorry, come here. Get so close, we need to talk about this closer. Back it up a little bit. That's not the right way to eat a cinnamon roll. I'm sorry. The middle is not to be eaten first. It is to be eaten last. Not only do I know how to eat a cinnamon roll, I know how to bake one even better, and I'll show you. Okay, so first you're just going to get regular cinnamon rolls like at the store. And then when you lay them out to cook, you're going to put heavy whipping cream in between the spaces of the cinnamon rolls before you put them in the oven. So putting the heavy whipping cream in between the spaces will actually make the cinnamon rolls just like the Cinnabon ones that you get like at the mall. So as you can see, the heavy whipping cream makes the cinnamon rolls way bigger. And now I'll show you how to properly eat it. You're supposed to eat the outside first. The middle is always the reward. Look what happens when you eat the middle first. Look, look at this. Does that even look right to you? That that doesn't work. It's not right. I'm sorry. I don't know if you know this already, but there's at least one male friend that you have that has suppressed his feelings for you. They already know. Come here. Every single girl who has a guy friend, they will know if that guy friend has feelings for them very quickly. The only thing is, even though the girl knows, they'll pretend like that guy friend doesn't in hopes that that guy friend finds somebody else so that they can at least keep the friendship how it is. But I promise you, girls already know. It's just as simple as like, the sun is hot and grass is green. They already know. You guys are overfeeding your cats. Because this is how much a cat is supposed to eat. As you guys know, right, this is Harvey. Come here. I wanted to try this one more time. I wanted to give him the appropriate amount of cat food, right? Apparently, it's like half of a cup. Well, after I did that, right, Harvey, he ate it, and I thought there was no problems. Until later on, he kept scratching himself on my phone and repeatedly kept pressing the power button. Well, when that happens, emergency services gets called Harvey called the police on me. 
When I told the vet this, the vet said, yeah, I'd feed him more for your own safety. So you know what? I think I'm just going to go back to what I normally feed him at.